Welcome back to day 10 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, I'm posting a new video every day from Monday to Saturday with a six mark question so that you can practice answering these. You'll find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also a playlist containing all of the videos that I've already done. Today's question is all about evolution and antibiotic resistant bacteria. Before you dive in, don't forget, this isn't an essay question, even if it looks like one. You need to present your ideas in a logical order, but there aren't any marks at all in GCSE Science for writing in full sentences or paragraphs. Your examiner is going to thank you if you're writing in bullet points or numbered lists or tables, as these all make it easier to mark your work. It's also really important that you have read the full question and that you answer the full question. Read the question back to yourself when you're finished and make sure that you've covered all aspects of it. Now, if you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. This style of six mark question about evolution is really, really common. So it's one that it's well worth you having a model answer for that you learn by heart and then you just change a few words depending on the particular context that you've been given. We always start from the point of view that we're not going to see this kind of evolution if every individual in the population is identical to each other. There must be some variation to begin with. And so we can then specify that in this instance, we're talking about variation in their response to the antibiotic. So we have some susceptible bacteria that are easily killed by it and some resistant bacteria that are not so easily killed. And in order for that variation to be passed on and for evolution to happen, it must be genetic variation. So it's come about as a result of mutations. Now, in order for evolution to happen, there has to be something external that's meaning that some individuals are more likely to survive and some individuals are more likely to die. And we call this the selection pressure. So when someone starts taking penicillin, that gives us a selection pressure and our susceptible bacteria die off quite quickly and the resistant bacteria are more likely to survive. Now, just surviving is not enough. If you're just sort of doubling your lifespan, but you're not reproducing anymore, we won't see that change. What they need to do is survive and then produce offspring. And when they reproduce, the bacteria are going to pass on the alleles that they carry, which made them resistant to the penicillin, to their offspring. We could also mention at this point that the um, bacteria are reproducing by binary fission. Now, this process is going to take several generations. When we're talking about evolution, we're never talking about one individual changing in their lifetime. We're talking about the whole population shifting over multiple generations. So each time that the antibiotic gets used and some of these resistant bacteria survive, then the prevalence of those alleles in the population is going to increase. And eventually we're going to reach the scenario where all of the bacteria are resistant. And this is important because in this question, they've talked about the bacteria all being resistant. And so we need to get to that final stage where we're not just saying that it's now more likely that they'll be resistant, but that all of the bacteria are. Finally, we can say that this process is called natural selection. Now, normally at this point in the video, I'd be highlighting which aspects of this answer you can miss out and still get six marks. But to be honest with you, there isn't really much here that you can miss out. There are a few things that we could sort of say might be implied by other parts of the answer. So, for instance, that first line, we maybe don't need to say explicitly because by describing that there are susceptible and resistant bacteria, we have explained that there's variation, although it is always good to use that keyword if you can. And then likewise, when we talk about the susceptible bacteria dying and the resistant ones surviving, that does sort of imply the selection pressure as long as we've said that that happens when the penicillin is used. And we probably don't need to say that they're reproducing it by binary fission. But apart from that, you do really need all of the other parts of this answer to get the six marks. Tomorrow, we'll be back for day 11 of the six mark challenge, this time back with chemistry paper two and looking at this organic chemistry topic. Don't forget, there's a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos and also the playlist, which contains all of the videos that you might have missed on previous days. Thank you very much for joining us for this day 10 of the six mark challenge. I hope that you're finding this a useful contribution to your revision. And if you are, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science videos coming soon.